today's stamp question, let's go over the solution. So f of negative 2, it's giving me an x value. So that means wherever I see x, I will be substituting in negative 2. That gets me a positive 16 plus 40 equals 56. Here, I'm being given a y value, so I plug in 80 for the output, and I will be solving for x. I need to subtract 40 from both sides. That leaves me with 40 equals negative 8x. I need to divide by negative 8. Make sure we don't drop that negative. x equals negative 5. So whoever earned their stamp for today, come on up. I'll stamp it real quick. Oops, that's supposed to be a thumbs up. <laughs> I can fix it. Where's the work? No work, no credit. We'll fix this. Here we go. Nice job, nice job. Fantastic. You're welcome. Okay. We will be moving, we will be making our way through several handouts. First, let's start by going over the homework. Okay, so take out your homework. Homework was to finish this worksheet, both sides. If you are forgetting what the homework is or you're not realizing, I have a bunch of extra agendas here. I need you to write it down. Or if you have a question, send me a reminder. Miss J, what was homework? I don't remember. And I can send you a message right back in about five seconds. But we need to make sure we're all on the same page here before we move on. So Jamel and Kenny are surveyors. They measure the speed of the current below a dam on the Columbia River in Washington. Based on their data, the speed in feet per second, so here it's defining a variable, we're going to underline speed in feet per second, can be approximated by this model. What do we do with models? Put them in a box. Where D is the depth in feet. Fantastic. Now, I don't see where it asks me to define variables, but what are we always going to do? Always going to do it anyway. So D represents, what's D? Speed. Try again. Be careful. Depth and feet. So update your notes. By the time we're done, this should be a perfect model of what it means to write linear equations and use them. And then S of D represents speed. How is speed being measured? feet per second. Great. So now that we've defined our variables, if we need extra copies, they're on the wall. Otherwise, let's make sure we're working on ours right now and updating the notes. Approximate the speed of the current at a depth of 9 feet. What am I going to do? I do. A, a strategy to know what we're going to do, let's circle 9 feet. Is that a value for D or S of D? S of D. D. Speed, this is not feet per second, right? So it's depth, I'm given feet, feet, value for D. So we are going to compute what? Calculate, figure out what? Good, S of 9. If you did not have a chance to do that last night, let's do that now. I see a couple people. Do we need extra copies? Where can you find it? Go, go, go. Over there, on the wall. Jeffrey, do you need another copy? So S of 9 is going to be negative 0 0.07 times 9 plus 16.8. If anybody needs a calculator, I have plenty. We're going to do the math together. Don't watch me. You do it too. See? I'm pulling out a calculator. You do it too. What would you guys get for 0 .07 times 9? Good. And is that going to be a positive 0 0.63? Or ne yeah, negative 0 0.63 plus 16.8. And then when I add that together, what would you guys get? Give people a shot. Hold on. There you go. 
16.17. Now that's a math answer, but what's my real world answer? I agree. This is the algebra is correct. But what does this mean in the real world? What were you asked to approximate? Reread the question. What did it ask you to approximate? And how is speed measured? Feet per second. So 16.17 feet per second. And I'm done. A nice sentence would be, at a depth of 9 feet, the speed of the water is 16.17 feet per second. B says the speed of the current is estimated to be 14.9 feet per second. So we'll circle the given. Is this a value for D or S of D? So it seems like a small step, but it really does help. Circle that given information, and let's write value for S of D. Write it down. So what's the math going to look like? What equation am I going to write? 14.9 equals negative 0.07d plus 16.8 and now I can solve for d. Go ahead. Use those calculators. Let's find d. Let's find the depth. Our notes are only as good as the effort that we put into them, okay? So there's a lot to be said for doing the math on your own as I work on it up here. Remember, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Part of listening is really paying attention to what you're writing down and trying it yourself. got a value for D. We should not be getting a negative answer. So if you are, make sure we didn't make a sign error by accident. Don't drop those negatives. So we're on the same page that our answer is 27.14. The question still stands, what's the correct label for this answer? Jeffrey? Depth? And good, so how is depth being measured? Yes. And it said round to the nearest tenth. This is the minimum. The minimum is putting a label. It's nice if we take it one step further and write a sentence, like the current if the current is at 14.9 feet per second, it means you're at a depth of 27.1 feet. But I will just accept an answer with a label. That's fine. Now on the back is where we really started to practice modeling our scenarios. It's a very important piece because after these two examples, I'm not bringing this back into the notes. So really focus on this. And if we have questions, make sure we ask, OK? Solomon charges a $40 flat rate 
and $25 per hour to repair a leaky pipe. Write a function that represents the total fee charged, y, so we'll underline that, as a function of hours worked, x. How much does he make for a three hour job? So this is nice, it gave us a little space to define variables. So you define your variables, I'll define mine, and we'll compare. So this part really just straightforward. Are we reading for information correctly? Yes, Jeffrey. We'll talk about that. So for our model, Jeffrey's on the right track with what he's thinking for the model. Y equals MX plus B. From Friday's class, what does M represent in an equation? M. What's M? Try again. Slope. M is the slope, also known as the rate of rate of change. Very good. So can you find me a rate? Is there a rate in this real world scenario? Yes. Where? Jeffrey? Not a flat. I need a cur like a per look for keywords like per each or every. $25 per hour. So again, keywords to identify a rate per each every. This is my M, my rate of change. What other piece do I need for a model? For a linear model? I've got M, what else do I need? B. What does B represent from Friday? Who remembers from Friday? What's B? The y-intercept, but in a real world scenario, it is the initial, initial what? value, initial value. So that is associated with like flat rate, um, any kind of flat rate or initial fee. Do we see a flat rate? $40 flat rate. That is B, my initial value. So now if I put all of this together to write my model, what's my model? Who wants to give it a shot? CJ? Try? You can do this. We'll do it together. It's we'll start f of x. CJ, what's m? We circled it. We wrote m above it. 25. So 25x plus what's b? 40. There's my model. I got some great questions on Remind yesterday about this, and I saw some people were trying to force there to be a number right here. X has to be there for it to be a complete MX plus B setup. So we're only plugging in a value for M and for B. Fantastic. Now that we have our model, um, we'll put that to the side for a second. I'm asked for domain. Domain represents what in this? Yes, hours, and then range money. Am I told any kind of restrictions in here about money or hours? No, I mean it does ask me this follow-up question, but that's just like a follow-up question. It's not telling me any facts like the government says he can only work for 10 hours a day or he makes a maximum of this much money. I don't see anything like that. So what do I have to account for? We talked about a little bit about it last week. If it doesn't give me a restriction, what do we have to pay attention to? Infinite's going to be part of it. What restrictions exist on this? Jeffrey? But that's a follow-up question. If it's, if it's stated he can't work more than three hours, then yes, that would be a restriction. But we're going to leave this alone for a second. Nope, that's part of my model. So think bigger picture. If it doesn't state a restriction, are we in the real world here? What's the real world restriction on hours? Zero to what? zero to infinity. At this point, if you want to do set or interval, it's totally up to you. So I would accept this as an answer. So like Davion said, infinity is involved here, or this. They mean the same thing. 
So your choice now between set or interval, because we should be able to move easily between both. Now let's check money. Does it tell me something about he can charge a customer a maximum of this much money? Yes. It does? No. <laughs> no. It does not. So what's the real world restriction on money? Zero. Zero, two. There you go. So if it doesn't give me a restriction, we have to remember that this is in the real world. The real world does have restrictions. I want a good question. He said, do I have to put Y or can, or do I have to put F of X? Can I use Y? For Algebra 2, I want us to graduate to being just as comfortable writing this as we are with writing Y. So let's practice and work with f of x. So I would take set or interval. Yes. So yes, technically these mean the same thing, but we want to definitely graduate to being comfortable with f of x. How much did you earn in three hours? How are you going to figure that out? I've heard from both of these guys, which is fantastic. I would like to hear more voices. Yes, Faith. Yes. So what, f what she's describing is calculating f of 3, because 3 hours is a value for x or f of x. Careful, hours, x. So that's the power of circling that and really asking yourself, what do you have here? Hours is definitely x. So that's what leads us to do f of 3 f of 3 equals 25 times 3 plus 40. 75 plus 40, do it with me. How much? I'll give you a chance. I want to see those calculators going. 75, or in your head, 75. 115? hundred and fifteen dollars for three hours. Not bad. Now F says if Solomon made two hundred and forty dollars how many hours did he work? New voices. New voices. If you know it you do it. I also need to see the work you guys. Show the work. Somebody else. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Two hundred and forty dollars value for X or F of X? Try that again. 240. Value for x or f of x? x. x. f of x. So write it down. f of x. Because f of x, as you defined right here, is all about money. So right here, folks, is the framework for the whole question. Pay attention to how you define your variables. So how am I going to set this up? Who can help me out? Set it up. Richie, what do you got? Love it. He's right. 240 equals 25x plus 40, and we're going to solve. So you solve, I solve, then we compare. Finish. Show the work. Some of you are experiencing the reality of no work, no credit. So let's practice showing the work. Show the work. Which part are you looking at? X. Yep, 25X. I got eight hours. Who else got eight hours? Fantastic. Good job. Go ahead and start number four. Bob had a summer job. Let's check in with each other. Do we agree so far? Fantastic. What does domain represent in this scenario? Hours. So let's write ourselves a little note. Hours. Range. 
Yeah. Just dollar sign. You want the units, right? Does this tell me anything about a restriction on hours or range? New voice. Who says yes? Raise your hand if you say yes. What is it? Very good. 20 to 25 hours every week. Is this a restriction on my domain or my range? Domain. Very good, because domain is all about hours. So how am I going to write that? Well, I'll write it. You write it. We'll compare. Again, at this point, set or interval, your choice. I'm respecting where it says H is ours, so H will be for our X value. How am I going to go find the range? Plug it in, plug it in. Go for it. Look up when you're done. We'll compare. So now we're, we're really back to prior knowledge. This is what we were doing all last week. What did you get if when he works 20 hours? 200. And S of 25? How about when he works 25 hours? 250. So my range, S of H, will be between 200 and two hundred and fifty dollars or if you want to use set notation two hundred to two fifty what does this ordered pair mean twenty comma two hundred Ayana what do you think what does this ordered pair mean let's work this out together what does X represent here hours. So what I want you to do, I want you to draw a little arrow and put hours. And then what's the 200 represent? So now with these labels, put the labels, I'll wait. Yep. Ayana, put all that together for me. Everybody's kind of echoing what I think you're thinking. What would my sentence be? Ayana, go ahead. Very good. When he works 20 hours, he will make $200. So this is a good strategy. When in doubt, add little labels. Very good. Can I have uh, two passers, please, for our next activity? This is going to be a quick, Shamar to that side, Lewis this side. This is a quick one pager. Again, our notes, we build, we're building our textbook. So you, we're going to start and finish this, this sheet in about six minutes. It's going to be quick. But it's, it's, if you notice, it says warm up. So it's warming up our brains to remember about function notation and graphs. So as soon as you get it, as soon as you get it, start reading the scenario, please. Hot air balloons. Has anybody ever ridden in one? Last class there was one person. I was very jealous. Have you ever ridden in a hot air balloon? You did? Aw. I don't know if I want to. It looks fun, but it looks scary. So. Yeah, I have a thing about heights. Okay. So again, this is a warm-up. We're reminding ourselves that we do know how to work with function notation and graphs. 
Pay close attention because we're going to move through it at a pretty decent pace here. The graph below shows the altitude during a hot air balloon. Look how pretty. Okay, really off topic, but how cool would it be to see the sunrise in a hot air balloon? Just saying. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, me too. I'll stay on the ground. But still, come on. That's beautiful. Graph below shows the altitude during a hot air balloon ride with Berkshire Balloons. That's the company. The altitude of the hot air balloon is a function of time. So this is, this is modeling the travel. I've got minutes on the x-axis, altitude on the y-axis. Let's, let's get our domain and range squared away. This is something we're really good at. So go ahead, you, you do it, and then we'll compare answers. Again, your, op, your choice, set or interval, I'll take either. Let me know if we match. We match? I hope we do. We've been doing this a lot. So let's all work sitting up nice and tall. Sit up, sit up. Find f of 30 and explain what it means. Is this giving me an x value or a y value? Think about the notation. An x value. So where are my x values located? Which axis? X axis. So I'm going to go to 30. 30 is going to be halfway between 20 and 40. What this is saying, it says f of 30. So when x is 30, what's y? So we're going to write f of 30 equals 200. But that's only a piece of it. It says explain what this means in the context of the real world problem. What does this mean? Fantastic. At 30 minutes, at 30 minutes, the balloon's altitude is 200 feet. And there's many ways to write this sentence. This is just one way. At 30 minutes, the balloon is at an altitude of 200 feet. Oh. Very good. What's different about number three? Yeah, this is giving me a Y value. What's the Y value I'm being given? 100. Now think very carefully. Which axis are you going to go look at right now? The Y axis, because I have a Y value. This is saying, y equals 100. So I go to y equals 100, bam, right here, and where's x? Is this the only spot? No. If I keep going, these dots are just to, to visually help you trace over. If you'd like to draw the dots too, you can. If you want to just draw a light little line, you can do that too. Where's this? 110 or 120? 110, good. Careful, 120 is here, I'm at 110. So we have two values, right? It said find all the x values. So all the x values kind of hints that there could be more than one. What's my first x value? 10. And then what's my second x value? Why does this make sense that there's two x values for this? What's like? Why is there two points? Jeffrey? Mm, in, the, in the real world scenario, why does it make sense that we pass 100 feet twice? Yes, Shamar? We go up. And we go down, right? So the balloon is going to pass this height after how many minutes first? The balloon is at 100 feet on the way up at how many minutes? At 10 minutes. But again, what goes up must go down. So, and again... on its way down at how much time? So notice, no math involved. This is purely, can I read the graph and pull out all of this information?
what's the maximum height? Don't shout out. I want to hear a new voice. What's the Emily? Yes. So I look. That's purely just what's the maximum height? 300 feet. What period of time is the balloon at that height? So if you have a highlighter, this would be a nice time to use it. Where should I be highlighting? Can you talk to me in words? Where should I highlight? From 40 to 90. Careful. So if I trace down, watch the pen. Trace down. I'm at 40. And then right here, what's halfway between 80 and 100? 90. So either visually tracing down or using your pencil is a really good strategy to make sure we don't pull the wrong values by accident. So it says in an interval, set or interval. So what would you like me to write here? what to what. Good. That would be if I used interval. Set would be f of x. Are we using x? Yes. f of x from 40 to 90. Whichever you choose. Once again, no math involved, purely reading for information. Lastly, circle another part of the graph where the balloon maintained that constant attitude. <laughs> attitude, sorry, altitude. Where is that happening? It's for 10 minutes, where? Right there. So circle it or highlight it. See that constant, that flat again? It means that they're just hanging out right at that height. So we, we identified it. Make sure you identified it on your graph, highlight or circle, neatly. It says we circled it or highlighted it. That part's done. But then it says, what is the altitude they maintained? Let's check. Yep, 200 feet. So maintained an altitude of tw uh, 200 feet. Maintains an altitude. I know, right? Attitude of 200 feet. And then, lastly, it says, "How long did they stay at that height? Is it 20 minutes? 10 minutes? I hear a vote. <laughs> I hear votes for 10, 20, or 30. Let's look. So check it out. Watch how you read this, right? So it's from minute 20 to minute 30 that that happened, right? So how many minutes between 20 and 30? 10. What? 10 minutes. So be careful with that for 10 minutes. All right. We're going to take all of this refreshed knowledge and apply it. Pastors, please. One more for that side. As soon as you get this, I want you to start the top section. As soon as you get it, go ahead and start. Yes. So we're finishing class doing A through I. The rest is homework. Finishing the front and the back is homework. So the farther we get, the better. Let's try. Yes. How are we on time right now? Okay, so let's start this together. You're still responsible for finishing this because we can. F of 10, is that giving me an X value or a Y value? X. So when I look at 10, where's Y? It's counting by twos. So what is this? Eight. Let's do B. What's my X value for B? So let me say that again. Some people just got their hand out. F of 10, it's telling me x equals 10. So I go to 10 on the x axis. Hold on. Your homework is the front. I'm going to stay here on the video and finish going through how to do A through I. The homework is the front and the back. So you can go online tonight and catch how to do A through I 
on my video if you're not sure. Otherwise, go for it, okay? I will be after school today till 3.30, Wednesday till 3.30. Okay. All right? Have a nice day, folks. I will finish this video, okay? Is that Monday, today? today and Wednesday. Yes, today and Wednesday, I'm here till 3.30. So for A, yes, folks, homework is front and back. After school, today or Wednesday till 3.30. Okay, all right, folks, back on the video. For A, we got 8 because this is giving me an X value. So I go to 10 on the X axis and I trace my way up to the graph and I ask myself, where am I on the Y axis? I'm at 8 when I look over. So that's how I got 8. For B, I'm given x is negative 8. So I go negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. And here I go down, 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 down. Let's see. This is also counting by 2s. So this is negative 2, negative 4. And when I trace my way over, I am at negative 4 on the y-axis. For C, for C and D, the process is not changing. Both of these, again, are giving me x values. So I go to x is negative 2, 1, 2. x is negative 2. I trace up, and I look. Where am I on the y-axis? I am at 6. For f of 0, again, x is 0. Where am I? My y-value is actually right there at 0. finishing this. So, oh, okay. So on the video, uh, right now I'm recording how to do A through I, and then the rest you should be able to do. You're welcome. Okay. E through G, we see that we're ch it's changing what we're given. For E through G, I'm told to find X because I'm given a Y value. So here in E, I'm told Y is 10. So I go up to Y equals 10, and I look, where's X? So I look over, oh, there's my graph. If I trace down, that's at 2. So my x value is 2. f, I'm told my y value is negative 2. I go on my y axis to negative 2. And this we're going to have to be pay close attention because when I trace this over, I hit the graph once. We'll have to figure out what this is. And then if I keep going, I hit the graph again and I have to figure out what that is. So this is at negative 4. This looks close to be negative 9.5, I think. We're going to estimate there. So I have two x values as an answer, negative 4 and negative 9.5. Lastly, for g, it says find x when y equals 0. So now I'm saying when y my y value, right? So y is 0, where's x? I actually have four answers for this. When y is 0, x is negative 10, negative 5, 0, and 5. Because again, 0 on the y-axis is right here. And I have to look for my graph, and it hits four times. At x is negative 10, negative 5, 0, and then again at 5. Domain and range. Domain and range, we're looking big picture. When I come in from the left, I'm at negative 10. Solid dot gets a bracket. When I come in from the right, I'm at 10. Bracket again, because it's a solid dot. Coming in from the bottom, negative 4. Coming in from the top, 10. For those of you who are being amazing right now and checking out the end of this video to catch A through I, I'm also going to help you set up this first question. This first question is just like our warm-up from the start of class. I am given a function, and I need to figure out f of negative 3, and then again, when f of x is 16, what's x? So let's deal with the first part. f of negative 3 means wherever I see x, I am going to plug in negative 3. and I get 22. In contrast, this is giving me a y value, so I plug it in for y. 
and I'm going to be solving for x. I subtract 4 from both sides. That gets me 12 equals negative 6x. Divide by negative 6. And I get x equals negative 2, and I'm done. Great job. Homework tonight is to finish these three, and then also to work on the real world scenario on the back, and we will go over both tomorrow in class. Have a great day, folks.